Yeah, tell us about Jack McDuff. Jack was great. Um, the reason I started playing with him was because I had uh, I had just met George Benson at the Blue Note here in New York. He, you know, he he uh, came to see me play again about a week later, yeah. and then suggested that uh, although I was doing that, I was doing okay with my friends, that I needed I, it was time for me to take on some kind of an apprenticeship and work with some of the, some of, some of the older cats who could. Uh, Really, he showed me the way. So the first name he mentioned was Jack McDuff. He said, you know what, I'm going on the road. When I come back, uh, I'm going to take you uptown to Harlem so you can uh, meet Jack McDuff and join the band and, and, uh, and, and start, to, start to work on some of the finer points, you know. Uh, but I, you know, being impatient as I, as I still am, uh, the next morning I found out where Jack was playing. And that night I went to see him. I went, went up to see him, I introduced myself, and I asked if I could audition for the band. Uh, and his guitar player was leaving, and just so you know, great timing. And, and mm. so he let me come over his house the next day, and uh, I auditioned. And he, you know, he uh, he saw that I had enough to get started, so he hired me. And then he fired me every night for the next three months. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what every was that about then? <laughs> well, you know, I, that that is exactly what George was talking about. You know, the kind of. Uh, um, there was no coddling going on. It was trial by fire. Jack yeah. wanted immediate gratification. You know, whatever whatever suggestions or improvements he thought I needed to make, he he, he wanted to feel like I, there was an urgency for me to get on that right away. So I would my being fired every night was more like constant, you know, constant probation. You know, he'd say you're yeah. fired, but tomorrow night when I play this chord, you play the same voicing. You know, <laughs> you know. And so uh, I spent the next I don't know eighteen months or so with with Jack. Um, and I'll say, no matter where, where we were, or you know what what the condition, traveling conditions, or how exhausted we all should have, should have been when we got there, he demanded uh, absolute, you know, close to absolute perfection from us mm. as possible, and he, he was relentless, you know, um, and and uh, and that was just the perfect place for me to get started. So that must have been something because you you had some big shoes to fill, didn't you? Because because George Benson was. Was doing that gig, you know. He was or the, the Jack McDuff. Yeah, you know, um, George had played. George had started his, you know, his professional career as a guitar player mm. with Jack, uh, um, and uh, you know that that legend was a lot to live up to, because although Jack had had lots of great musicians, and great, great bands, with great guitar players, you know, at some point. Uh, most of the jazz guitar players who you know come through New York had been, had done some sort of small stint with Jack. Mm -hmm. He played with everyone. Yeah. Uh, his you know his recollection uh, uh, of you know the legend of George Benson uh, um, was uh, uh, that that was that was you know it, it was it was it was larger than life the way when George joined the band Jack didn't know that George wasn't really a jazz player. Because his audition was basically just playing some rhythm guitar, and Jack had a tiny little uh, air organ, the thing with a pedal or something, in his hotel room. So he hadn't heard George solo or anything. Uh, um, he hired him because you know, Eddie Deal, the guitar player, was quitting. And so they went on the road, uh, and after the first night, he realized 
that uh, George was in no way ready for the gig. But they were going to be gone on the road now for like, uh, uh, I don't know, for two months. And so Jack, so Jack said, well, man, clearly this is not the gig for you, but you play good rhythm so you can be in the band. And, and I, you know, and two months later when we get to New York, I'll just buy you a bus ticket and send you back to Pittsburgh. Uh, and so that was, that was supposed to be the beginning and the ending of George's career. But uh, mm -hmm. George just, you know, every night, that's, that's actually how he developed his picking technique because he would lay on top of the organ on his back in the trailer. As yeah, they he's got that way of playing, isn't he? Yeah. Practice like this, holding the guitar, yeah. steady, you know, and, and uh, but you know, the result of that was two months later, uh, he was the star of the band and the rest is history, you know? So um, there was there was precedent there for me to hurry up and get my stuff together quickly because apparently George had done it 40 years ago. You know, it was, it was always that. And so, uh, um, well, and I quite, he did quite well after that as well. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and I did. I didn't want to let Jack down. You know, I really appreciated the fact that he'd given me this chance. I was younger than everybody else, and I didn't have any yeah. experience. And I wanted to be good. If nothing else, I wanted to have the feeling of you know walking on stage and doing something uh, um, that was completely my own. It'd be great for you to share with everybody some your thoughts about Wes, about Wes Montgomery. When I first heard Wes, of course, I, I, I didn't, you know, uh, uh, I didn't have an, uh, any, any idea visually of, 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 uh, of what, his te te what his technique looked like, how, how he was creating that sound, or playing octaves, or playing, you know, playing a chord solo in that way. So when, when George began to, you know, sort of unravel those mysteries for me, uh, um, I had even uh, a greater appreciation for uh for for Wes's accomplishment you know got to, you know to kind of develop his own technique and his own yeah. sound and and uh and i just you know when i first heard i think the first first recording i heard was um him playing around midnight you know from his organ trio record and i just you know how is he where do all those chords come from <laughs> i don't even i don't even see those here you know uh there, you know there was that thing first i, I it was uh, um <laughs> And I was just getting into, you know, my study of harmony. So, yeah. Um, and then, you, you know, to hear things, well, you know, like he didn't read music or he didn't know that. Well, how in the world did he have, you know, where, where did his amazing command of harmony uh, come from, chord soloing? And, and, and you know, and, 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 I, and then I, you know, I wanted to know about, I had read that he, you know, he started playing by, you know, because he, he went to the store and bought a guitar and, hit the, and his, the first thing he did was transcribe some Charlie Christian solos. Uh, um, which I, which I, you know, found that hard to believe, but it was true, you know, and, and so um, everything about West was, was mesmerizing to me. Immediately clear that he knew everything about the harmony, and he, you know, and and uh, um, and so that's a testament to his work ethic, right? The man, he had two jobs, and nine nine kids, and and he thought he was up to play guitar, you know. Yeah, but he, you know, he he, we, we started out talking about West, right? And so, what what, he, what one of the things that he took from West. And from Grant, uh, they were, you know, Wes, Wes and Grant Green were both, uh, um, they were, uh, uh, they, they believed that, you, you know, that, that this finger had no place on their hand. <laughs> like, you know, they, they, used, they used the, you know, their pinky to play chord, just to, you know, it was there for chord voices. But uh, they, they, you know, they, they were both uh, um, uh, of the thought that the sound was not the same, the strength was not the same, so they played with three fingers. Uh, and and George, uh, um, that made sense to him. So then he had to adopt, uh, um, a, you know, an approach to playing across, to, you know, to, to covering uh, uh, an octave, you know, or a chromatic scale worth of notes with three fingers as opposed to four. And so, uh, um, mm. you know, watching him play an arpeggio like this, uh, as opposed to, you know, pl playing vertically as opposed to horizontally. Uh, playing playing horizontally as opposed to vertically uh, uh, was how he explained that. Like playing a chromatic scale, I would you know I play it like that. George played like this. Yes, you yes, know, yes. You, know uh, um, you know things like that. Uh, and it, it, it was a certain economy of motion that he that he that he actually you know Grant Grant did it, but Grant just did it really slow, right? Uh, West yes. West West obviously was much more fluid. But George said that, that uh, when he and Wes would go to sit in with Grant at, at um, there was a spot uh, uh, in Harlem where they would go and sit in when they were all in town, 
Grant, Grant used to tease Wes uh, about about the what what he, what he thought was a was a crappy sound because he didn't use a pick. And he and he, and he said, Grant would say to George, he said, "Yeah, old Montgomery's all right, but he need to get up off that thumb and get him a pick, right? And give me five. <laughs> and George was like, "I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a cosign." That like you know, uh, uh, you know, so uh, um, it, 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 sort of imagine those guys sort of giving each other shit. <laughs> wow, but, um, you know, but but it was definitely a thing there. You know, you know, Mark. Uh, not just to be able to play what you know, but it's that you can play what you hear. You know yeah. what what you know what, what you know. Uh, um, and so. Uh, uh, what he was saying is, you know, when you, when you begin to trust that, you know, all this work that you put in to play, to learn to cover the instrument physically, uh, um, will come, will, will will support you when you go to when you go to you know try to play something, uh, uh, you know, a, more in tune with what you're hearing or something you're inspired to play. You have to, you have to have the confidence to try it and and believe it'll work out. And 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 a, a lot. What reinforces that notion is. Even if it doesn't go well or as well as you hoped, it often opens the door to other ideas. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't try that, you never open that door. And that, you know, so yeah. I, I, you know, that is the really important thing because, and it's something I say to my students, always give yourself options. So you don't have to play exactly that way. If something goes, no, you can go somewhere else. And sometimes that's where the fun all happens. Absolutely. That's often where, where, that's where that's where the you know the you know the, the best you know the best music happens in between what you practiced you know and, and you know and, 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 and what you imagine you know somewhere in between there is, is 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 you know I always say my ear has its own my imagination has its own ear and what what I've started and as I, you know as I improved as a musician I began to pay more attention to what that to what that imagination was hearing uh, uh, and oftentimes that's where my best playing lies. <laughs> Good to see you and hear you again. <laughs> Amen. Oh, that's great. So, <laughs> thanks, Mark. 